they have definitely calmed down now quite a lot. They um, moved off slowly. It was just, I think, that initial excitement of heading down to the dam. Also, because there, there are youngsters around, the elephant are still cautious and they, they, they uh, we could probably say they get a little bit nervous uh, when approaching a dam. Just they're not sure if there's potential predators around. Now we know that in this area, chances of anything going for a big herd of elephant like this, the lions, very, very unlikely. But in other parts of Africa, the lions do hunt elephant. So they're always still cautious, but you could see there's an excitement. There's a, there's a, I think, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's probably just the excitement of getting to the water. They know there's water up ahead. They're going to get a drink. Um, and you see how slowly they are moving away now. Really completely different behavior to when they were coming down into this area. They were moving very quickly from when we first found them. And especially coming down this hill towards the dam, they get that bit of a swagger, bit of a little trot going on. I don't know if you can call it a trot, but the elephant trot. That was great. Perfect timing. And we got to see an owl. <laughs> so I'm very happy, very excited. Elephant, owls, giraffe this morning. No cats, unfortunately. Not yet, anyway. But we still have some time. You never know. I might head back into that area where I had those tracks of the male leopard. Now, I heard they found Tingana at some like on Buffalo's Hook. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually walked through from the southern boundary all the way through to the northern boundary. They can easily do that in an evening, especially a male leopard like that. Um, especially a male a leopard like that, he can cover a huge distance. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe we bump into something a little bit later. Senza, I think it was a bit too soon to panic for our tire. It looks fine. Tina, the elephants trumpet for a number of reasons. It's mostly communication. So they will communicate with each other when they are trumpeting. Um, the, the young elephant get quite... Oh, let's see if that elephant's going to go down there, is it? interesting look at that now Tina the um, the elephants will trumpet especially the youngsters trumpet when they are upset um, when they perhaps not getting water from the uh, water from the mothers <laughs> when they're not getting milk when they are trying to suckle and the females are weaning them off the milk and the youngsters get very upset and they trumpet and they make a loud noise but look at that isn't that amazing going straight down and that embankment's quite steep now, elephants have the ability to climb up and down very steep areas. I've seen in Zimbabwe, almost climbing up parts of cliffs, that, um, certain sections of cliffs that these elephants are able to get up and over. It, it's amazing. Um, so, Tina, the elephant will also trumpet if they feel threatened. If there's a, a, a pride of lions, for, for example, around, those elephants will trumpet and they'll chase them to warn them off or to try to chase them away. They trumpet if we get too close, if they're unhappy with the vehicles, elephants will trumpet. So it's all communication, and <clears throat> but mainly mainly for for um, a warning or cause a call of distress almost. I, I suppose that would be the best way to describe the, the trumpet of an elephant. They've got a few other ways of communicating. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, sure, sorry. Uh, there's some more coming back this way. See, the herd split. So I wouldn't be surprised if this other elephant haven't had a drink yet. And they might be coming through to drink now. Right. Anna, you asked what is the largest herd of elephants that I've seen. Uh, Anna, um, I 
think the, the largest herd I've seen is probably about 80 to 100 strong, 100, just over 100. Having a look here, there's some wonderful birds flying around. Just double check something quickly. Looks like we've got some wire tailed swallows over there. I think those are the wire tailed swallows. I just want to double check quickly. Nice view of them sitting on the ground. Just seeing because we get a few different swallows around, but the barn swallows and most of the other swallows have migrated. So those are the little wire tailed swallows, those little ones with the very white breast. And they are here throughout the year. Yeah, you know, those look like little wire-tailed swallows flying around here. But there was another. Wow, that was so quick. Yeah, almost certain wire-tailed swallows. Um, I'm trying to show you a nice image of one. That's them. You can actually see. This is a lovely picture of them. <clears throat> so we we could see there's a bit of a grey head on them. Um, and uh, those are the younger ones over there you can see that but that very white breast and a lot of these that we saw here were some of the younger ones but that's the adult with the little brown brown head I'll try to see if we can get another one for you and then we've got some other swallows around here too just hold on a second so it's not just the yeah those are definitely Double checking. Oh, those are the wire tailed. But then there's some other swallows sitting up in the tree above us. Now I wonder if these are not mosque swallows. I haven't seen them for for a while. I'll just double check. Sorry everyone, I'm just having a good look. The colour at the moment, looking into this grey sky is making it difficult. But there, that's a nice view of them. See that uh, rufous belly? I just want to see if there's a bit of blue on the head. I can't really see. Looks like there is. Well, that actually... To make it easier for us, it can't be anything else. Um, no, I'm not sure if any of you have seen the mosque swallows before, but those are those are the mosque swallows. That's lovely. I haven't seen them on Safari Live yet, but. Um, We do get them in this area from time to time, but not often. But those are, I'm just having another good look. I just want to be 100% sure because we don't see the mosque swallows often. No, guaranteed it is. It is a mosque swallow. That's wonderful. Now, they generally like baobab trees, in fact. But I have seen them down in the Sabi Sands before, and they, they enjoy these dead trees. They'll often go and roost in the dead trees from time to time. Wow, Marco, you say the mosque swallow is number 234 for your list. That's a very decent list, Marco, for, 
for Safari Live. Wow. See, they're generally scarce. Taylor, you say 91 for you. That's wonderful. So, as I was saying, the mosque swallows are generally scarce. So, it's wonderful to see them around. But, um, so, pearl breasted swallows and mosque swallows. Like I said, I haven't seen mosque swallows in this area for... Oh, I'm trying to think now. Must be a few years, actually. Must be, yeah, I think so. It's probably a few years since I last saw some mosque swallows. And I just, you know what I'm also going to do is I'm checking my app. And I'm checking the bird book too. I want to make 100% sure, but I'm sure all of you can agree with me that they are mosque swallows. If you look at that um, rufous color down the... Um, if you look at the rufous down the, 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 the front of the bird, or the, the belly, and then they've got a white throat, and a bit of rufous, what would appear, I suppose you could say, behind the ear, there's a bit of a, that rufous brown coloration, bluish, uh, bluish wings, blue tinge to the wings, and then a bluish head. Now, you probably can't see that blue very clearly, because the sun isn't shining on it, but it definitely, they do have that blue coloration. Oh, that is wonderful. Mosque swallows. Nice. I have not seen them, as I said, for quite some time. So we've... Oh, what a great morning. Even though we've got grey skies, Taylor is also driving around under these grey skies. I hope she's not, she's not depressed because of the grey skies. Let's go cheer her up. 